Hi, this is Hedi. The title might seem a little bit straightforward, but I do believe that guard slams are a very important aspect of grappling. They can be a very efficient tool in a grappler's arsenal, but not only that, historically they have a lot of significance. Um, there is a lot of strategies to be built around it, not only to execute it, but also to defend it. So today I'm going to be discussing it in multiple contexts and understand the safety and education that Kano Shihan wanted to present and have in judo. So there is actually a solution to the danger aspect, but I do believe that it does evolve the sport and also for self-defense reasons, it should be worked around and not completely banned. So today, one of the most popular uh, grappling events are, of course, the ADCC. So the rule when it comes to slam in ADCC is that if you want to do it just to do it, you cannot. But in order to escape a submission such as this example, you can easily go ahead and do it. So you can see how much of a risk it poses. So as someone who is slam, also in MMA, it is something that is obviously used. So here, I don't know why the, the fighter did not let go of his legs and just stand up because he was basically giving him all the control. If you watch how the head uh, bounced off the canvas, it is not a beautiful sight. So as you can see here, this should have been a clear win. Um, and he could have just let his legs go and stood up. So let's take a look at an old Horion Gracie instructional where he's demonstrating that um, if someone's pulling you down and you cannot have a strong posture, you can easily pick them up and slam them. And he's talking about how dangerous is the, it is. So he talks about the fighters letting go. So he's basically speaking in a context where slams are legal and back then I believe that they were in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he's talking about another one where you actually threaten with a guard slam and so you uh, oblige them to open their guard and from there you proceed to pass. So first you establish a base with your legs and then you can threaten with a pickup uh, if slams are legal obviously and then in order to avoid being picked up, the easiest thing they can do is actually let go or have their legs or their guard opened. Another thing they can do is obviously hook the leg with their hand. But here we're talking about basic guard pass. So it used to be a thing. So obviously you can strategize around it. Here, let's see in judo that you can obviously be put in a position where you can be picked up. Here you see Olympic champions going at it. So he goes for Tomoe Nage. Ono bases up with his legs, watch, and just easily picks him up. Fabio does the logical thing and lets go of the legs and stands back up. Now, it's important to have a good base when standing up, when someone is connected to you. That's why I would say when he, someone has you inside control and attempting a buggy choke, it's much easier to be picked up because of the chest to chest uh, connection. And that's why I think a lot of these submissions from these bad positions can be a very bad idea in a lot of contexts. So um, here, let's see, it's very important to have good base. Now, what's the solution safety wise? I've discussed this many times. And this is Daki Age. Daki Age means high lift. Age from the verb Ageru, which means to lift up. So the way you score a pawn with Daki Age in the past was you actually base up and then have a good posture and then lift them up high. And then from there, the match is stopped and you are given the win. Basically saying that I can put you in this position, I can easily finish you off. So here you see he underhooks uh, the legs and then he lifts up. He's basically preventing him from putting his legs down. So there's just so many ways you can work around a guard slam, either if you are attempting it or you are preventing it and trying to lock your submission. 
So what is the, the history behind Dark Age? It has a very deep and long history. So in the past, Meiji era, Jujutsu, and even uh, before, obviously, you know that there was uh, inner peace in uh, Japan uh, during the Edo period. So a lot of these Jujutsu schools would either use their training for self-defense on the street against gangs or in competition. And competition was a very big thing. So there were very few rules. So a lot of the times, if you read the old records from Mariyama's book or any other record, you would see that there were minutes and minutes on end on the ground or he was thrown, you know, 20, 10, 20 times. And the rules were basically the following. You either uh, knock someone out or you get them to tap out. Uh, or obviously, if they uh, get unconscious from the, the strangles or when they verbally say, I cannot go anymore. So Dakiage, it was introduced because one of the ways you can actually end the fight and a lot of the fights were going into the ground and scrambles because the throw was not a finisher like today's judo. So a lot of the scrambles would go on the ground and then finally someone gets to win. So the stronger guy will obviously use something like a guard slam. So when rules were starting to being put in order to avoid these concussions, in order to make uh, jujitsu more safe, that's even before Kodokan Judo, they established that something like Daki Age in the early days was a valuable, uh, valid. They uh, introduced the pin later on on the first Kodokan rule, the two second pin, the Ippon, uh, and one of them being Daki Age. So because of the concussions and the injuries, so they decided that, okay, if I can lift you up, it means that I can finish you off. So they kept that realistic context, but they took safety into their hands. And I do believe that Dake Age, MMA, they can do whatever they want or ADCC. But in terms of Judo and Jiu Jitsu, IBJJF with the Gi, Dake Age should be a thing. Because your guard is not strong if you can be picked up. And also we want to avoid concussions and a lot of bad injuries and brain damage. If you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.